So I'm Emory Brown, I'm a Warren Zapel Professor of Anesthesia at Harvard Medical School and Massachusetts General Hospital. I'm an anesthesiologist at Massachusetts General Hospital, as well as the Edward Hood Tapman Professor of Medical Engineering at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I'm a member of the IRS board, and currently I'm serving as the treasurer, and I'm, as well I'm the incoming president. I think what initially attracted me to it was uh, my experiences in third year of medical school, and it was just a great experience. I, it was really hands-on. I learned about the drugs, I learned about the physiology, I learned about the pharmacology. And I realized that in terms of patient interactions, patients are scared out of their minds when they're going under, they're going to have surgery. And real, being able to talk to patients and reassure them at that point, not having the knowledge that I have now was already quite gratifying. I enjoyed that because it meant that you had to be, you had to be a real people person because this is somebody you just met like 10 minutes ago. They're scared out of their mind. You have to reassure them you're going to take, you're going to be very responsible and see after them while they're undergoing their surgery. So that pharmacology, that physiology combined with these human interactions just made it a very, very appealing subspecialty to consider. A principal focus of the research is in trying to understand better what the state of general anesthesia is, and then in addition, trying to come up with better ways to use the current tools or drugs that we have for anesthesia to improve patient care. I think we've written, we've gotten to a state of kind of complacency with anesthesia. It works, you know, why mess with it? You know, I think if back in 1846, if let's say Morton had been complacent about the idea of anesthesia or try, not trying to think through something new, we might still be putting patients through really trauma and butchery just to undergo surgery. And if you solve that problem well, you'll improve anesthesia care for patients. If you solve it and you understand the neuroscience of it, you can contribute to other problems in neuroscience, clinical neuroscience, and you can also draw from those fields to further improve anesthesia care. And my thing outside the lab is probably languages, romance languages. I started off as a romance language concentrator in, um, when I was in college. Um, when I showed up at college, uh, I was already very proficient in French and Spanish. Let's say three weeks ago, I was in Madrid. I gave a series of lectures in a public forum, like, all in Spanish. It changes the dynamics completely. It just creates a much richer intellectual exchange. So it just points to the importance of continuing to learn. There's no two ways about it. Actually, having to learn deeply about a field as well, not just, not just superficially. I had intellectually decided at that time, so this was about 11 years ago, that I did want to devote a high fraction of my research time to thinking about problems in, in anesthesia, in anesthesiology. And this was kind of like the ideal way to become engaged at a very high level in the field of anesthesiology. Becoming a board member provided a very fortunate high level way to engage with the anesthesiology community in a way which wouldn't have been possible otherwise. I think the future looks very, very bright because if you think of any place where you really want to have precision medicine care, it's an anesthesia. You don't want the anesthesia care that's appropriate for the average patient. If you're coming to have surgery, you want the anesthesia care that's appropriate for you. And you want to know the anesthesiologist is tailoring that care to you on a second-to-second -second basis. So I think that anesthesiology, anesthesia care, is probably the best example of where we must develop paradigms for precision medicine or personalized, personalized care.